And this, this series is called House Plans, um, or excuse me, House in Order. This morning's message is House Plans. Um, but what we've been, we've been talking about is something that, and I just want to give a little bit of backstory, and but Pastor Evan and myself are going to be doing this uh, morning's message together. Um, this is something, uh, again, with house plans, house in order, um, uh, has been something that is, it didn't originate just January. This is something that really in the end of October, and I would even say a year prior, uh, October 2020, 2023, 2023. Yeah, I don't know what I did there, but 23, in October of 23, um, no, 22, 22. So a year, almost almost a year and a half ago, um, just uh, it, when I'm sitting in a deer stand asking the Lord, what, what are you, what's this next year hold in 23? And what I heard so clear in my heart and, and shared with the staff and the church is that it would be unfamiliar to me, that there would be a move, there would be, begin to be this beginning of, uh, of what is not the norm. You know how many of you know when you're in a place that's unfamiliar, you, you happen to look for some direction, you happen to trust different things, you're ha- you just can't just go do your norm. And so 2023 was kind of this beginning of, I would say it this way, a transition or shift in, in just how you're, in, and I would say how we're doing things. And, I'm not, and the thing about a word of the Lord is, it's not just... Uh, personal, the word of the Lord is truly, if it is from the Lord, you'll find that it affects every individual. Like you'll find that there's a, you're stepping into a season that the Lord's saying, uh, it's not going to be what you've always known. Uh, there's going to be some adjustments you're going to need to make. I'm another, in other words, I'm beginning to transition in you into a place of greater trust, which is sometimes where the place we don't want to be, right? Um, or or just there's a, just a shift, I, but that's the way I could explain it. And then uh, as we came, as I was sitting just a year later, and I'll tell you, for me and for this house, that was hugely accurate, right? But in, this, in the world stage, it was hugely accurate. And as we coming in to 2024, it, it was this, this, it, this word. It was house in order, but also a word of doors. So it's like there's this shift and like uh, of unfamiliar, but right now we're in this place, and I and, and if you might not know this, but the world has picked up on it, and that there there has been a shift, and there's a shift of just how things are working, and there's a transition, right? You know what a transition is? You know what a transition strip is? You have a transition sh- strip, maybe from t- your wood floor to your tile, if you have laminate flooring, or a transition strip, or you could call it a threshold that you've got to step across, but that's what happens when there's an open door. Uh, there's an open door. There's some that, that we're either going to step, we're not going to go through, or we're to, we are to step through. This is this year. It's a time of great opportunity. There's a, not just opportunity, but a time of just open doors. There's different, a different way than what we've known before. And so out of that place, and as we're coming in to a, just a different season, before you get there, the Lord, I believe, He'd want us ready. So what we're, what we're talking about has not been uh, about just like, okay, what could we teach on? It's uh, let's get this house in order. Let's make sure our house is in order. Let's make sure the priorities and, and, and the ways of God are implemented in this house and in our house because of, uh, because of the season or because of the transition uh, that we are in in this time. And whether you, uh, the world is picking up on that things are sh- shifting. There's a shift. Let me say there's a shift. Have you, has anybody here felt a shift that you're like, ah, oh, just there's a shift. I don't know. I can't put my hand on it because it's not a natural shift. It's a shift in the timeline of heaven. He's working and he's been working his plan. And it's important that we would be a part of his plan. And our house plans and his house plans would be the same. That we would have the same uh, and set the same value on what he calls valuable. Yeah. Like, th- this is huge. Like, in this time, the world calls a lot of things valuable, but the Lord's like, shift, get things in order. You've been calling this valuable. That's out of order. You're like, get this, get the things in order. And, uh, and so we've been in this, 
um, just in the series at the beginning of the year, uh, really intentional uh, to, to get to the house in order. And so uh, we started this year talking about this, about how there's not a plan B for you. This is, there is not a plan B. And, and you cannot, in this season, you cannot ask God to bless your Ishmael. Uh, you can't just go about your, your own way. And, and I would ask this question again. What have you and what are you doing with the promptings of the Lord? Now, the thing is, is you know what the Lord has spoke to your heart. Nobody else but you. You can lie to your heart, but your heart won't lie to you. And so what am I doing with the promptings of the Lord about, you know, when he deals with me about a little thing? Is that, and I'm like, oh, yeah. And then when it comes to the rubber hit the road or I got to make that decision, I make a move and it's going to cost me or it's going to affect my life from what I really like to do. Then I'm like, oh, that was just that was just me. That was just a pizza dream. That was just. And just I'm letting go of the prompting. See, the promptings are, are, are not for, it's, it's to help us. It's to lead us. It's to direct our steps into a place of God's plans for us where we're not doing it alone. So much of our, our fear and our anxiety in this, in, in this world is because we're playing God. And we're playing God in what we decide we're going to do. And so what you and I order, we're also going to have to provide for, Right? That, 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 that's the thing. And so we're taking on these so many cares because we are the master or the sole director of our life instead of yielding to and looking for a prompting. Right. Yielding to and looking for a prompting. This is why Jesus went away in the mornings because he needed a prompting and a direction for the day. This is why even spending time in the Word is not uh, in a Bible reading plan to some degree if it's just like, i got to get this done, i got to get this done, instead of I'm waiting with the Lord. That's backwards. That's religion. Right? But, but, but we do know this, that the Bible says that His Word is alive and it speaks. And so, so many times we're looking to hear from the Lord, but we never open what's speaking. It's like trying to hear the radio without turning on the speakers. Plug it in, and you'll find that the Holy Spirit will show right up, and he'll talk to you about tomorrow, he'll talk to you about today, all those things. All right? And if you remember, Brother Marty, when he was here, talked really a lot about the inward witness and following what you know. Mm -hmm. And so um, just going back to what he said, that I'm, I'm not in control of my life. I shouldn't be. Oftentimes we can be. But what is it? It's daily going before the Lord and walking with the Lord throughout your day. Like he said, yes, reading the word is important and stuff. And then the Holy Spirit has stuff to work with throughout the day. But also just being led in the decisions we're making. And, you know, sometimes when it's crunch time, when it's something, I got to make a decision. I got to do this. I got to do that. And we just do it instead of, Lord, what are you saying? You know, God... I, I shared this with Pastor Nate, and maybe it was just like a light bulb moment, but I was like, you know, Jesus accomplished his full call. He was on the earth, what, 33 years? But from the time that he was anointed to do what he was supposed to do, it was three years. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You never see Jesus rushing around trying to finish the call. Finish what he's asked me to do. Hurry up, disciples. We got to get over there. Hurry up. We got to do this. Yeah. What was it? He took time to step away. He took time to pray. He took time. The, the enemy wants to push us to make decisions quick. Why? Because he knows if he can get you there, you're going to ignore the witness of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit may lead you to do that. Yeah. But it should never be from a place of driving and pushing. Right. And I think that's some, something that I know myself I can be guilty of is where you're driving, you could say it this way, we are really intense about something. But Jesus wasn't intense, he was just consistent. And, and so many times when, when the Lord directs us on something, we're like, oh yeah, let's do it, ah! you know, all out. But if we'll just continue to walk it out, instead of like, well, I didn't see it, like, but just being consistent, we'll have, we'll, you know, it, it'll eat... Uh, It'll eat your intensity for breakfast. Consistency will eat your intensity. All right. Um, so, and we, so we were talking about Plan B. No, don't. There is no Plan B. And then we went into uh, Plan Plan A. 
So begin to get back out the words of the Lord and imagine, plan, plan A. If you've ever built a house or if you maybe have uh, did a Pinterest or a kitchen remodel or a bathroom remodel, um, it doesn't just happen that quick. You have uh, you, you you get ideas. You you begin to look at at colors. You begin to uh, see this bathtub or this faucet, and you're like, "Am I going to pick uh, gold or am I going to pick oil rub bronze or am I going to pick brushed nickel?" Well, I don't know. Is that going to go with this color? Because I really wanted this color. And you begin to imagine what you're looking for, and 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 eventually you'll get to where we're talking about today. You'll get a plan, right? But but right. But you got to begin to imagine. Plan A, you got to begin to imagine God's, what God has said. And the gifts, again, there is no plan B. The gifts and callings, and, and God knew you, and he formed you, and he set you here for such a time as this. You're on this earth not by accident, but by heaven's design. And he, there are gifts and callings in you that he is calling for, and he's asking and desiring for you and I to steward in this moment. But to steward them would mean to put action to them. But I can't put action to what I don't understand or what I don't see. And this is why so oftentimes we're not walking in and with the plan of God. Because we haven't even taken time to see or get on the same page, if you will, on figure 1-3, right? To put, the, to put the wheel on the bike. You understand what I'm saying? So imagine, you know, begin to imagine plan A. And then we talked about this, that... that uh, the next week we said, you know, you won't even, you won't imagine. You, you'll get tired of the imagination if, if it's not desirable for you to serve the Lord. We talked about, as for me and my house, uh, we're going to serve the Lord. That means we're going to serve the Lord, but it's got to be desirable for you. That, that, he said this, uh, in, in, um, he said, if, if see, serving the Lord doesn't seem desirable to you, or if it seems like raw, like raw. That's, it's actually like that's actually the word raw. But if it seems like you're going to have to make a decision. And I think this is huge for us is we need to be honest with ourselves. We need to be honest with our spouses. We need to be honest with our children that I just really am tired of serving the Lord. Okay. Say it. Say where you're at. Be truthful with yourself. Don't live a lie. Because, see, God can't even work with you when you're just, meh. You're like lukewarm. He says, what did he, he'll tell you, what did he say in Revelation? He said, I wish you were hot or cold, but because we're indifferent. And where we're indifferent, we're actually holding a role and, and playing a part. And the Bible tells us that we're actually partnered with the destroyer. He says that those who are idle, those who are lazy, those who are indifferent are our brother to the destroyer. And so we can act. We can partner with the enemy uh, in our families, just and, and we just because we're just there. Are you just there? Because if you're just there, guess what? The devil's there, and he's in your house, and you're living a life, and you're saying, oh, "Come on, kids, do what I do," but I'm not doing it under the. the and we wonder why our kids grow up. Because we're not, we're not, there's no fervor here. See, if there's not fervency, then you're not hot. And this, we can get to this place in our lives where, where there's no fervor for the Lord. But we're going to talk about, get to that this morning at the end, but the, the fervor for the Lord, that's a fire. There's a fire. Is there a fervor in your marriage? Is there a fire in your marriage? Like a hey, hot in your marriage? There should be. There can be. Let me say this, there can be again, because there was. It was, when you said, I do, I'm pretty sure it was, I do. <laughs> I do. And you can still have that, I do, and just wake up every day that much, that much more in love than you were at 18, 19, 20, 25 years old. All right? And so then we got to this, um, uh, heaven's flow. So these are things that are, if we're going to get this house in order, we're going to have to know that it's not plan B, it is plan A. I've got to get that back out, put that before me, because that's my will. And then from that, I've got to say, yeah, it is God's plans for me. His boundaries fall for me in pleasant places. And then from there, I, I'm going to say, you know what? It is God's way. It is God's way. 
And there is an authority, and we talked about the authority and how vital authority is from the Lord. How vital authority is in our nation, and not just in this nation, but all through in the kingdom of God. And we saw that where, where there was chaos and what, what happened in heaven was when, some, when authority was challenged. And not only just challenge, but, but I, I'm not going to come under authority. That's where you saw just the enemy work. And that's what the Bible actually talks about where he says where there's strife, right? Uh, there's every evil work. Strife is this picture in, that, in James, which is like who's going to be on top of the mountain? Well, you don't get to decide who's on top of the mountain. Do we ever realize that I don't decide who leads but we live in this America, well, I'm going to cast a vote, so I have a decision. But in God's, in God's way, you don't have a decision. He declares, and that's what is, and you come under. That's what it's going to be like in heaven. What he says, you're going to come under. There's no voting or anything like that. And, he, and we talked about how even he, 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 the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord, and he turns it whatever way he wills. And so we talk about praying for authority, but also coming under authority, and that's that submission. Why, why is authority so important? Because under his authority, we come under his mission in our lives. We, we come under the plan of God, and there's an objective. Did you know there's an objective for your life? And it's not just like, okay, I want to get a house with three, two, you know, three bedrooms, two and a half baths on five acres, and enjoy life. Like that's, there's more to life than that. And it, it, it comes from divine order. It comes by being under authority. And so we get in these things in order. God's way is best and his way. His way. And then we talked about this, how so many times um, what challenges are, are, are walking in and walking with the Lord is unbelief. And, and we were talking about getting the unbelief out, and we talked about heaven, ultimately, um, who told you, we were talking about who told you that, and how uh, so many times it's not that we're lacking faith in the body of Christ, it's just that there's so much unbelief because there's so many opposing words. And that's what unbelief is, it's an opposing word. And right now, everywhere you look, there's words, there's words, there's words. And I really believe that, in, I think it's Matthew, it says, will I find faith on the earth when I come? Well, the only way you can have faith is when you hold that word, not next to another word, but it alone. That every other word comes underneath of what God said. And that i got to hold God's word as final authority in my life. So all of this is about getting our, our lives in order and being able to trust and transition and make this, make this step, in a sense, to transition from an unfamiliar way where we've lived in this way where, we're, where we can do this. And, and even we could trust this a little bit. And we could trust this. How many of you remember there used to be a time when you heard somebody say something on the news, you go, oh yeah, that's true. But now you're like, hmm. There used to be a time you'd see something and you're like, whoa, did you see that? Now you're like, they're, they're so, so good at uh, putting things on a, a page and editing and green screening and, and, and filtering that... I mean, they could put your face on my face, and we can look. They can make you. You can talk. They could. I could talk like Snoop Dogg. Right now, like if you you could put a filter on, and what I'm saying right now, Snoop Dogg would be preaching the word, but it would be me. But this is the amount of filtering is crazy. So the way that you used to live, where there was truth. And the Bible says that as you get into the end times and as you come closer to the end, one of the greatest signs in the, in the, the signposts, if you will, of the flashing light of where we're at will be the, the void of truth. Like it, every, there, there won't be a, a truth. And so we're at that place. And so the, this is why it's so important for us to get these things in order and they hold God's word as final authority in our life. Because the Bible says, and this is what's so cool, God knew the end from the beginning. And he said, I'm going to lead you by the inward witness, by the still small voice. But it, this is important right now that we learn to listen to that. But if, if, if the moment that God's word becomes questionable, right, it does, no longer carries its, the authority. It moves from a command. And so it's so important that we have God's word in that place of command. And, and some of the other words, we just don't even entertain. You know, have you ever heard that guilt by association? Did you know that 
listening to uh, the wrong words can just bring you into a place of you, that's what you, you and I are a part of. And, and literally, bring, we, we, all of a sudden, show me your friends and I'll show you who you are, right? This is huge. This is huge. Like, what are we listening to? And so uh, when you think about in the military, and again, in, in the military, if you and I are listening to uh, insubordination, then what's going to, what, and the general was a catchy ear of that, what, what, what does that mean for you, private? I mean, what is that? Uh, you sometimes, like, put your, put, put your imagination to work. The Lord gave it to us, right? But put your imagination to work uh, uh, in heaven when you had the angels fall. I mean, what, what do you think was going on there? How do you think, how do you think the one-third became the one-third? Do you think it had anything to do with these? Where they transitioned from belief to what they knew and saw? They transitioned to what? Unbelief? They transitioned to no longer holding the, God's word as the, the high place because of these. So this is a huge of what we're listening to. And, and even in, in, you know, the Bible tells us how, and as you see the day approaching, he says that there's going to be all kinds of words. The word of God is going to be everywhere, and people are going to want to listen to even the word of God as how it would fit them. And no longer be able to adhere to sound doctrine or be planted in a place or in a, a tent and bring of a supply in the house of God and have to go through some of the stuff that I don't like when they do that and I don't like how they do that and I don't like how that person says hi or doesn't say hi or, or just all of these kind of things where, where and i got to hear the same word that, that the Lord has prepared for me because he sent me there. Now, is that putting a lot of pressure and like, oh, pastor, no, this is a, the church is something that God started Back when he said, let there be light. When God said, let there be light, he didn't, that wasn't his first thought about light. He imagined what it would be before it ever even came about. Did you know that Paul said that, hey, God illuminated to me and showed me the mystery of the church that he had ages before, but it was unknown to them, but it was in the heart of God? Can I tell you the church has been in his heart for ages and ages to come and, and that he has it set in place each piece and every part and not just, that none is more significant than the other, but all are extremely valuable. And if I was to degrade over here and say, well, you make something less or to call less a part or that it's not important that you are a part, that would be attacking what God is building. And so the, the, all of this is, it's important where God sets you in the body of Christ. And it's not just for this house, it's for every place. It's important. I just had a conversation with a gentleman just two, night, two days ago that attends another church, and, and he's a, a, really a pillar there. And, and we, were just t- we were talking, and, and he, he kind of gave off this, uh, like a little tiredness, you know. And I said, yeah, but you're a pillar, and you need to be there. And you, and, and it's kind of like, oh, wow, okay, maybe, yeah. It just, it's important where God sets you. The Bible says in, in 1 Timothy 3.15 that the church is the pillar of truth here on the earth. And, and if you've ever been building a house or building or seen a pillar that, that's tipped off a little bit, maybe it got knocked off because something happened, it's, all you got to do to make that pillar really function and not break is just kick that base back over and get it back in place. Put the pillar back in place, and when, you, when that pillar's in place, what happens is it can withstand so much more weight. A two-by-four with, with one on the side can hold up that porch with the big columns holding up, but, but just only if it's vertical. That it's drawing this way instead of this way. Well, what are they doing? Well, what are they doing? Well, what about those guys? Well, what about those guys? The pillar and the strength of the church, the pillar of truth on the earth, it, it, it has its strength when it draws vertical. 
Not when it, that same two by four, I could probably jump up if you put it between two buckets and jump on it and it would snap. And yet it can hold a whole because it's vertical. So orientation matters and where I draw from matters. And so we're talking uh, again, uh, again about that. And so, yeah, go ahead. Um, just that scripture, it's First Timothy 3.15, that one that he was referring to. Um, but it, Paul's telling Timothy, so that you will know how each one must conduct himself in God's household, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and foundation of the truth. So I want to just kind of that term church, and we hear that and go to the church, which, which we're, what we're doing today, teaching the word of God, that is, uh, that, that's part of it. But every one of you, if you've made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, you are the church. So what you have to look at here then, the church of the living God, the pillar and foundation of the truth. So the church, are, the church, you, me, we're to be the ones that hold the truth or are on the foundation. This is why questioning the word of God is so dangerous. And this is why the culture we're in of question everything. You hear that. Question everything. Question everything. Question everything. Oh, okay. But when you get over into now I'm in that mindset and now I'm reading the word and I see a direction for my life or I see a promise and I begin to go, mm, mm. There's no that foundation, there's no foundation then. Because if I'm questioning one word in in the Bible, I'm questioning all of it. I can't just question one word and then believe that the rest of it is true for my life. I have to receive the whole truth of God's word. I was just on a Instagram thing because we're building, and I was looking at a design, a girl that was doing design, and um, someone made a comment on there that said, is this, are you real, or is this like an AI whatever account? Because some of your stuff looks a little whatever, computer-like and not real. And she's on there going, no, I'm real. <laughs> no, I'm real. No, I'm real. Well, you know what? That was just the AI chatbot saying that. Yeah. <laughs> but see, this is what I'm saying. We're filled in, we're in a world who is constantly, and we're bombarded with news. We're, we're bombarded now with AI. We're bombarded with stuff. And if we do not learn to be led of the spirit and not led by our eyes and our ears, we will be duped. And we will also be duped if we do not take God's word as final authority. Right. What I see in it, what I hear in it, Amen. is true, Amen. period. Yeah. And so even the, when you talk about the, the church, it's ecclesia, right? It's the church. I believe that's right. Um, but we're talking about this as, as assimilation for a common goal. And so... Uh, just as the Bible tells us that in the body of Christ, there's many parts, right? But there's one body. Um, God calls parts together. And so I have, if God's called me to be a part of the hand, then I need to love the hand. I love the whole body, but I need, I'll find my best function where God set me. And so uh, it's okay to call yourself a hand. This is, it's okay to be a hand. But you're part of the body. It's okay to be, in a sense, uh, committed to being a hand. It's okay to be committed to being a foot. And not only is it okay, it's vital. Because when things are not connected and not committed, there is not the life flow there. And so th this is hugely important. Again, so talking about, um, again, uh, just uh, the battling of unbelief. All that was really about battling unbelief, opposing opposing words, uh, th words that give access uh, to us, we, we, words are important. So, and then last week we talked about, it. so again, all this is about getting God's, God's house, our house in order, the, to where there is the flow that is supposed to happen. And so what you'll find, it's just really basic. It's just saying, who's God? Who's leading my life? Where do I fit? How do I come under? How do I fit with one another? And then we talked about the foundation, and we, if you go to uh, 1 Corinthians 13, the very end of the uh, chapter, it says, now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. So as we build the foundation, the greatest thing about this building, you don't see. It's the foundation. Because if that foundation is not sure, and if that foundation is not true, 
then what you see here is it will be dilapidated in no time. It'll fall. It'll crack. And so that foundation we talked about, you, you and I, we might only know in part, but I do know my part, and that is love. And so we, we, love is a big part. It's the foundational part. And from that place of love, there, it says hope and then faith. And so there really is a direction. Now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. And, and the foundation is love. And so if, but if we're going to build in our lives, you'll find that when you get love in order and you get your motive right, you'll find that your picture, which is hope, will begin to be painted. It'll be God-painted, not just self-authored or self uh, illustrated and and then you'll not only have that picture but then you'll get to that place of faith which is the works so I, I'll get I, I got a motive I got from motive I go from motive to a picture that, that's that hope and that hope produces something called action or faith faith without works and I can walk in God's plan but motive is huge so pastoring can I tell you sometimes um, I could walk out of love. Like I could be tempted, you know, maybe like you, to walk out of love. Not just as a husband. Not just as a friend or a dad. But can I tell you, when, when you feel like you've gotten suffered wrong, you can feel like, you know what? I can pastor out of love. You know, that can happen. And so it matters that even the words, again, what we, what we cook here, or what we teach here, we eat. Like, I eat what I cook. And, and so that message about, I don't know everything, but I know, I don't know, I only know part. But you know what? I do know my part. And what messes me up in, in life and what messes you up in life is to try to figure out the other parts. Instead of just being focused on what my part is and just letting the rest go. I, I got enough to do to take care of me that I don't need to know anything else. And so that was, that was last week. I only know in part, but I know my part. And sometimes I get out of place. Anybody else in here get out of place? Sometimes my wife told me, I, I said something pretty rude yesterday. Uh, I'll just tell you what it was. So I'm terrible about this. But I'm gonna, uh, we, we were working, uh, doing some projects, and, and uh, she had lunch ready. Right. And so I was had a, actually had a tool belt on and, you know, um, and just working away. And I had one of my two of my boys with me and she said, hey, lunch is ready. Lunch is ready. And so I was like, hey, we should nail the finish nailing these boards up and then we'll take lunch. And there's no, it's ready now. OK, so take off the tool belt, go over there and just p- painting the picture to try to justify my t- terribleness. <laughs> And I get over there, and, uh, and she did. She had everything laid out ready. And this is, sounds so, this is so rude on me, okay? I'm just telling you. But the sandwiches weren't made. They were just set out so you could make them. And I said, oh, I thought you said it was the ready. The atrocity. <laughs> huh? I said the atrocities. The atrocities, right? Like, it's all laid out there. I'm like, and I said, I'm busy. I was busy. I thought you said it was ready. That's what I said, all right? Okay. And I'll show you ready. No, I'm just kidding. Huh? Yeah, that's what she said. No, she didn't say that. My she just mind gave me, thought it, but I didn't say it. She gave it. me the look. I said, and then I was like, oh. I said, this is so frustrating because I was up on the ladder. I had a couple of these boards to nail. When that's ready, and I put my, I was frustrated, and I went back. I said, when it's ready, then let me know, okay? So, and then she told me today, she said, you better be on your A game <laughs> today. After that, she... I will say I had to repent myself because when he walked away, I was slapping the mayonnaise on the sandwich and I was throwing the chicken on there. And I'm like, you can eat your chicken. Anyway. Stinking. So it can... And then I repented. We can all get in a place where conditions and frustrations and, and pressures and all these things cause us to be things we shouldn't be and we know better than we should be but we do it anyway and and you get the check and you get the red flag and you just kind of keep on going past that bridges out sign and you know what when that happens you we have to be able to go back and apologize and go back and repent and this is one of the greatest things that we could do and really needs to happen in the house and with relationships that God ordained and set together and called together is if there is a schism, go to the person. 
even if you were a heel or they were a heel, or if it was just miscommunication and it was 2 o'clock, 2.30, and you're eating lunch. That can happen. And when it's 2.30 and you're eating lunch, there's something called hangry that can start to happen. And so that could be part. But bottom line, it doesn't matter what the conditions were. It was out of line. And so because it was out of line, you got to get back in line. And that line is love. That line is love. No matter, that line is love. We're great now. <laughs> In case you were wondering. <laughs> so, A game. All right. So, uh, <laughs> so, and so this morning, we're, we just want to talk about house plans. Uh, the house plans of this house. And so, uh, just the picture. How many of you know house plans? Uh, that's kind of one of the most exciting times. If you ever built a house or if you're like one day going to build a house, uh, you'll find that looking through house plans is really exciting. It's exciting, but it, what's even more exciting than looking through house plans is getting the house plan. Like, you went to the blueprint, the architect, and you got the big white tube, and you're like, look it, that's what it's going to look like. You're like, oh, that's so cool. And you can't really see it all the way because it's just white, or it's on blue, but it's not, they're not so much blue anymore. It's just printed paper, but, but you can, it's black and white, and you're like, Okay, so we're, we're, it's going to, but you can kind of get an idea. And that's an exciting time because there was intentionality, there was time, there was persevering, really, through the, oh, does the, I can't get this to fit here. And well, I really wanted to have a walk through this and I really wanted to have this here and, and to get it to come about, right? It takes time. You've heard, maybe you heard this said that if a marriage can withstand building, right? We, this we're on number three, all right? Or late lunches. Yeah, or, yeah. <laughs> yeah praise the Lord. Uh, Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, um, so, anyway, um, let's go on to this, right? Yeah. So, if you'll put in, uh, put up 1 uh, Corinthians 3, 9 through 11. 1 Corinthians 3, 9 through 11. It says this, and starting in verse 9. It says, For we are God's fellow workers. We're, we're fellow workers together. Uh, nobody's, in a sense, in a class of their own. Um, we're all just, we're fellow workers. Isn't that cool? Like we're called together. That, that, that you bring a strength to me as much as I bring a strength to you. That there's, a, there's just this fellow togetherness, right? Fellow uh, workers, uh, you're God's field. You are God's building. So, even just thinking about this, when, 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 I, when I tear somebody down, you're, we're tearing down what God's building. It's kind of like that little punky brother that while you're building Legos, he comes and knocks them over. You know, that's not okay. And we have to recognize that. It's not okay uh, in this house, and it's not okay in my friend's house. It's not okay for these kids to knock over the neighbor's kids or to talk bad about the neighbor kid's house, okay, to knock down their Legos, so to speak, or to, to lessen their Legos or to talk about their Legos and how their Legos are being built or well, at, uh, we are building ours like this. Have you ever been a part of those conversations as, as kids? Well, yeah, well, I have this. And it's just like, oh, you know, I guess I'm not, I don't. I don't know if you've ever been a part of that kind of conversation. It's just, it's disheartening. It's devaluing. And, and so he says, um, we're God's building. It says, verse 10, though, by, by God's grace or by the uh, grace God has given me, I, Paul, laid a foundation as an expert builder. He was the one that the Lord illuminated the mystery of the church. The first one that he had held in his heart for ages. And he finds Paul and he says, you're persecuting what I'm trying to build. You're tearing down what I'm trying to build. And you are very fervent about it. And I need you to be fervent about building what you've been tearing down. So let me illuminate to you what I'm doing. And so he illuminates to him. And all of a sudden, everything changes for him. And he goes back and even shares that vision before at Rome about who God is. All, and he comes with, this, with the vision of God. And now he's talking about it. Because he heard it right from the Lord, he was shown this mystery. 
And so he says, I'm a, as a wise a master builder, I laid a foundation, and someone else is now building upon it. But each one must be careful how he builds, for no one can lay a foundation other than the one which is already laid. Again, we're talking about uh, the church, building the church. 1 Corinthians 3.15, the pillar. Uh, yeah, th- excuse me, 1 Timothy 3.15, not 1 Corinthians. 1 Timothy 3.15, we're talking about the church, the pillar. What's the pillar? The pillar of what? What is the church the pillar of? Do you think it matters if truth is here on this earth? If God's called you to be a part, do you think it matters what part you play? Yeah, I think it does. It absolutely matters. So if truth is to remain here on this earth, and to be, it needs to make sure it's propped up and it's taken its draw from the Lord, right? So, again, we're talking about building the church. So I, I want to uh, give you just a kind of a picture of, of my heart uh, that maybe I could communicate what we're, what we're trying to go to. Um, if you've ever built a house, or maybe you've uh, bought a rental house or bought a house and you're like, you get in there and you want to make it your own, and this is really common in this day and age. It wasn't so common before, but people say, I really want this, um, you know, kind of like I want it more, what would somebody say? Okay, so I, I want it more open. People, I want to knock out this wall because I really like that open Con- feel concept. People are like this concept, this picture. I really like the open feel. So you could just say, I, could we just knock that wall out? No, we can't knock that wall out. That's where everything. Okay, well, what if we could do this? And so you're trying to get this concept of what it could look like, an open concept. And I really believe that's what the Lord is wanting for the churches to have it be more open. Why? Because like it, we're right now in a rental house and it's way more divided than we've ever had or lived in a home. So our, all of our homes that we've ever designed, they had the open concept. And so uh, I have three boys in their room. They all shared one room. Uh, it, it, they, we weren't partitioned and divided off. We just didn't like that for our family because separate. You know, it's interesting. You Separate means to be self-sustained, isolated. But did you know that if you were to spell separate or to spell separate, they're spelt the same. It's just how it's used in a sentence. And so, so many times, separate really does lead to separate. Like, and so, what our heart growing up, or when we were raising these boys, you know, when they're really little, they wanted to sleep in the same bed. You know, if anybody have kids, they're their buddies, their best buddies, their best buddies. And as you grow up, I grew up, I'm one of six kids, I, I knew that fights were going to come. Like, fights, you know. Because you ate the last sandwich or, you know, could be anything, right? And so what I wanted, I wanted less, less walls for my boys as they were, as they were growing up. So that's what we had set up. And, and, and we, really, I, we really believe in what we've seen is life flows better when things are, when there's not walls, when they're open. Have you, have you ever had walls with somebody? You know, does life flow there? You, have, you could have a wall right now with your mom or your dad. Right now, you might be 40 years old, and you got a wall with your mom and dad. Tear the wall down. Do a little remodeling. Talk about the wall. Figure out how to put something else in. A bridge between it. You know, that's what you got, so often you have to do. You have to, if there's a wall there, it was holding something up. So you got to put an LVL, or you got to put a, 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 come help me out, Jack, a back. Uh, yes. Yeah, hog back up in, up in the attic. So it's a reverse beam, like a bridge. Instead of above or below, it's above. So you can keep that open concept. So you got to build, ultimately, it's a bridge. You know, a bridge is connecting one point to another. Like, what does that look like to build the bridge? So that has nothing to do with what we're talking about, building the bridge. But maybe if it does for you, maybe you need to go to that. That's what it looks like. From this side to this side, build the bridge. Tear the wall down. Open the concept up. And so, uh, just that is for us in the, in this place is um, just having just a more uh, a togetherness is the best way I could say it because when there's open concept when you're in the kitchen cooking and the game's on or they're on the couch or you're re- in there reading your Bible and everybody's together they're just they're just together they're on the same they're on the same page and that's important to us 
And uh, it's, for, uh, for, and the, the craziest thing is, is like what God is reveals to a, a family. It, it's, it's like it just it's kind of an evolving thing. But in this day and age, and where we're going in in this time, I really believe Lord's was wanting to get some things in order and have some more openness, maybe in a sense some connectiveness in this body than we've than we've had. And so to get that to be brought about, there's plans. And there's plans that you look at and you hold before the Lord and you go back and you revise and you revise and you look at and you go back and, and all that kind of stuff. So um, I want to give a couple more scriptures and then, uh, <clears throat> you know, really just talking about the t- signs of the times and where we're, where, we're, where we're living. You know, Jesus said in Matthew 16, he said, you can tell, 16 verse 3, he said, you can, you can tell uh, that it's going to be stormy because the sky's red. Like you say, hey, oh, pink sky in morning, sailors, take warnings. Pink sky at night. Like we 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 know these kind of things, but he said, but yet, uh, the verse four, you can't interpret the or three. But he says, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. Like, are you so dense that you're not aware? And then he goes on to say this: a wicked and adulterous generation demands a sign. But none will be given to him except the sign of Jonah, sign of the son, or sign of Jonah, rather. And so what he's talking about, except for the fact that I'm going to be raised from be three days in the belly, right, or three days in the earth, and then raised raised again. But right before this, they were saying, "Show us a sign, Jesus. Show us a sign." And I, I think this is where we're at. We're in this time where, and he's talking to the Pharisees. So I I genuinely believe there are times that the world picks up on things faster than the church, even though the message is to the church. They're, they're, they're picking up on things, and we're over here looking for a sign. You know, we're, we're looking for a move. We're looking for, uh, I have wrote, wrote a few things down, but like we're, we're looking for a move, a sign. We're looking for the new. You know, the cool, the, the, oh, this is how they're doing it over there. This is how they're doing it over there. This is how, what are you doing? You're not doing anything. You're just going and you're looking for a sign. And, and he said, you, you adulterous generation. And I think we can be that way, very adulterous. You know how adultery starts? Well, you're just kind of meh about your marriage. You know, you're underwhelmed. You know, just like, you know, it's... And so you're looking for something exciting, something new, something awesome, Something, ooh, wow. That's so we should try this, or we should do this. or And you, you begin to pick up different hobbies, or you, you enter conversations that you have no part of, and you begin to water other grass and other relationships instead of your own. This is how people, this is how, this is, this is how people commit adultery. It doesn't happen just in a moment. It's just because they stop doing what they once did. They stopped doing what they once did. And in Revelation chapter 2, 1 through 7, it says this is, to the, the, this is to the angel or to the pastor of the church at Ephesus. Um, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his, ha- his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds, your labor, your perseverance, and know that you cannot tolerate those who are evil. And you have tested and exposed as liars those who falsely claim to be apostles without... And without growing weary, you have persevered and endured many things for, for the sake of my name. Yeah, you're still married. You're still doing this. You're still doing the thing, man. Way to go. 30 years you've been at church. Good job. This is what he's saying. You persevered. I mean, you still say what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. But you're just indifferent. This is what he's saying here. He says, um, but I have this against you. you. You left your first love. You left your first love. You're not, you're, you, you go to church, you, 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 we're married, but we're not in love. We're in the same house, but we're, I got my man cave, she's got her whatever. You know? What, huh? She shed. There you go. Yeah, uh, whatever that is, I don't know. Um, you abandon your first love. But he says this, and this is, he says, therefore, uh, keep in mind how far you've fallen. Like where, 
like, call, recall to mind, like, where once you and I, where church wasn't a burden if there was an extra thing. Have you ever been there? Like, so, like there was a time it was like, man, Sunday night, can't wait to be back at church. But in this day and age, it's kind of like, <sighs> small group? Small group? I have to lead a small group. I have to go to small group. I have to buy cookies for them. I don't even like those. We're having, t- everyone's bringing tacos. I-, I had tacos last night. Like there's just this, indi- recognize how far you fall. Like we, this is not just to you, this is to the pastor. This is to the, 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 the messenger. Okay. He says, uh, see how far you've fallen. He says, hey, repent. Lord, I've, I, what, what you're building, what you love, what you're, what you're doing, he said, repent. And, and he said, but, and not just repent, but he said, do something. Do something. Perform the deeds you did at first. So when you were dating that girl, you know, when you were thinking of how can I get a little bit more time with them, how can I... Like, go back to those deeds. Like, in marriage, the same is true. If your marriage is meh, well, date her. You know, get the flowers. Do the back rub. Tickle the hair. I don't know. Play with the hair. I don't know what you, what did you do, but you did something. You did something. You called and talked on the phone. Hey, I just wanted to call. call hey, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. Okay. Okay, bye. Did you hang up? No. Like what? Fall in love. How do you fall in love with what God is doing? You do again what you used to do. You can't just go to the new. God's not changing. He's building one thing, the church. And the church is the pillar, the support, the prop, the stay of truth here on the earth. That The next generation must hear must hear. But if, 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 if you and I aren't fervent about what God is doing and what he's been building and is continuing to build and what he's coming back for, what, what, what are your children going to hear? What are, your, what are your children's children going to hear? What is the generation that's beyond these four walls that are in the schools going to hear? Oh, well, that's, that's great. I'm putting my kid in a, a Christian school. Well, great. What about all the other ones that don't know about that and don't have that opportunity and need to hear about a message? What about the ones in the highways and the byways that need to hear and be compelled to come to Christ because they had a bad experience about, oh, church is only about us four and no more and everybody that has everything together instead of just going through hell and lives look like it too. What about them? Well, I'm too busy for them. I'm like the priest walking down the road. Oh, I see the guys beating up. I'm going to the temple today. Hey, hey, Brother Bill. Hey, hey. That's garbage. And they don't even, you're not even love the church. Do, do again. Go back to what really matters. Gather together. Be excited when I come to the house of the Lord. Know that I'm hearing and I'm going to meet with the Lord. I'm not just looking to wonder, are they going to sing that song? Because I don't like that song. How come that light's flickering? Wonder if pastor's going to, or strike out. Like, what? 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 Like, why can't we have transparencies and just sing, Hosanna, Hosanna, or like, I don't know, uh, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me with just the keys, and we don't need everything. Well, because we've fallen out of love. That's why we don't, we've fallen out of love. That's where we can get really easy. And so do again the things you did. He said, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end there just for, uh, and, and I, I want to I close uh, this morning's message uh, before giving some of the directions of the house plans that we're talking about um, with Luke chapter 4, verse 13. Luke 4, verse 13, maybe you've heard this story about Jesus being tempted. 
in the wilderness? How many of you just nod, help me out? So Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. After being filled with the Spirit, he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, and the Satan tempted him there. And he tempted him in different ways, and he said, it is written, it is written, it is written. And in Luke 4, 13, it says this, if you'll put it up, when the devil had finished, when he finished what? All this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. Your translation might say for a more opportune time. And I, I want to just take a moment and, and, again, talking about where we're at in the threshold and these doors of time and, where, and the timeline of heaven. We truly are in a place, um, and we look at this verse, we're thinking, well, the devil's going to come back when he's more weak. Right? When he can really get them. But you know when the devil showed back up? It was in the time, and that word opportune time is the word keros. An appointed time. An appointed time. Can I tell you we're at an appointed time? Right now in history, we're at an appointed time. Can I tell you that every, uh, because of the time... The enemy knows that this is a keros time. This is a, a right place, right time time. This is a door time. This is a door, there's a threshold and there's a door to step through into a new. And, and things are changing and things are transitioning and all these kind of things. But this is a keros or an opportune time. And the enemy, we'd be a fool to re- think that the world can see it. We're picking up on it, but the devil doesn't know it. No, he knows it. And this is, he says here, he came back to Jesus at a Kairos time. He came back to him when he was telling the disciples when when and what he was going to do. And it was going to be hard for him to do it. He said, I'm going to lay my life down. And Peter said, what? Not so, Lord. And he said, get behind me, Satan. And then in in the garden, so he said, get behind me. This opportune time. He's about to step into the time. And then he visits him in the garden with great temptation and great wanting to quit. But nevertheless, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. He bows his life before the Lord because of the time. Why Why did he lay his life? Because of the time. And we're at that place in time. We have to ask ourselves, again, with house in order, is there a plan B? Do, I got a plan, plan A. Is plan A desirable to me? Like, what am I, what am I doing with what God's put in my hand? Like, how, am I loving what he's loving? Because the time is keros. The time is opportune. Not just for the enemy, but for you and I. God is doing things, and I'm telling you, time is speeding up in just moments. In business, in in church, in work, in life, anything that's submitted and surrendered to the Lord. In families, to move in a moment. What is this? I think about the gate called Beautiful. A few years back, Trey Bollinger, he taught a message here, uh, right place, right time, and how they came to the gate called Beautiful. It's actually the gate called Keros, the gate, right place, right time. He came, and this guy had been sitting there for years. But guess what? He was at the right place, at the right time, and that quick. And that's where we're at. We're just at doors. And so what does it look like to, to step across the threshold, in a sense, into, that, into the door, the open door? It, it, looks like, it looks like being in the right place at the right time. It looks like you and I aware of what we're doing and how we're stepping and how we're walking. It, it, it's just the awareness of, wait, okay, this, this matters what's going on in this time. It matters what I'm doing with my time. It matters what were my priorities of the time. It matters that I love and I, I do again the things that I once did. And, I, and that's, I, I believe, um, that with all my heart. You want to read this? Okay. And so um, as we were talking about house plans and getting some things in order, you know, you've heard me say different, th- maybe you've heard me say some different things like, uh, what does it look like to be together? Or, man, I thought, what about just, we just, no, no chairs one Sunday morning, you know, like just, 
Because so many times our learning is, uh, and I don't even know the term, but it's where we're just in, in chairs with the one teacher. And that's good. It's important. It's necessary. But there's also other ways to learn. There's ways to learn where we are encountering and we're hearing and seeing and showing and watching. And, and so and so with something we've been talking about, praying about, and yet not at the same time, not overburdening or, uh, or, or unnecessarily taking time from people's lives. Like the Bible says, teach us to number our days because the days are evil. So one, two, three. Four, like let us be in step with him just just that rhythm like a dance just so in step with him and so we've been <clears throat> just asking the Lord well, how do we go about this as in this house in this and so uh, it has a lot to do with our Wednesday nights um, and small groups and uh, you know there was gosh this is going on year 14 of, of, of pastoring uh, here and we've done a lot of different ways of small groups Honestly, some, they don't seem to work sometimes. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes you're like, oh, it's the leader. Sometimes you're like, well, it's because of their house. Sometimes it's because, like, well, they laugh and they're fun. And yeah, who knows, right? Oh, it's because we are only doing this and we should really be doing this. So we've done everything from event-based small groups to, you know, here, play the tape. Maybe not, you know, play the tape, but, you know, kind of small group. And, uh and, and so the, as we came into this year, it's like, what about small groups? Well, the consensus was from the leaders, it's like, oh, I don't want to do one this spring. Okay. All right. But maybe in the fall when, you know, because in the, our, our small groups this last year, or in the last couple of years, were really based around events. And it's kind of like, I'm just tired of entertaining people. And I get that. Because I get that. get that Uh, and so we're like there there is an answer because we're supposed to be gathering all the more as you see the day approaching but we're supposed to be gathering and wanting to come together but not just only coming together at a just because it was functioned or sponsored or something like that but there's to be relationships and and all these things happen but you know so um anyway and so we're uh we're, we're, we're doing a few things with Wednesday nights, but it has a lot to do with small group and consistency versus uh, just intensity, right? Um, and so the, just a couple of things. Help me out here. Beginning April 6th, or April 3rd, beginning April the 3rd, which is the Sunday or the Wednesday after Easter, March 31st is Easter. So April the 3rd, somebody say April the 3rd, Wednesday nights will move to 630 so all those th- FAQs have been thought through. I'm not going to go through FAQs and all that. But at 6.30, our service time on Wednesday nights has moved from 7 to 6.30 starting April 3rd going forward. Why? Well, we wanted it to be earlier, number one, to give a little bit more time uh, for fellowship or things that, you know, so where it's not 8.30 when we're getting out, it can be 8, okay? Um, and just maybe more people can come. But, uh, and on top of that, uh, because we're going to be utilizing every third Wednesday for small group Wednesday. And what does that look like? That looks like in this house, we'll give a couple announcements and we'll break out, grab a few snacks, and we'll have small groups going on. And this is every week. There'll be child care here. But every third week on Wednesday night, we'll have small groups, small group Wednesday. And then on top of that, or in addition to that, There'll be one time a month, the first week of every month. Um, not well, again, we'll, you'll see it in transition. But this year, there's six more. I think six, six times we will meet as small groups in homes. So only six times for the rest of the year, but yet ten times. So it's like 16 times. You know what that happens? Relationship, consistency, and and what we're going to be talking about is not like some new thing. We're just going to be talking about what the Lord is talking to you about because you wrote down some things that I didn't say. You wrote down some things that the Holy Spirit's been talking to us about, and and we're going to see how you swing the hammer here and how they swing the hammer here. We're going to talk about the Word. We're going to see how to apply the Word. And talk to me about what it looks like to walk in love. Talk to me about what it looks like. Well, you know, know, what really stuck out to me was this last week when we were talking about the offering and the, the offering declaration. And you're 
the Holy Spirit, there's just this exchange with one another where we are learning and, and, and there's confirming words, even just as individuals. I was like, oh yeah, can I check my answer with you? Oh, I'm hearing from the Lord. You ever feel like that? Like, I heard from the Lord? Look it. Uh, th that's an exciting thing when you get a confirming word. And the Lord's talking to you about that too? Yeah. He's talking to you. Why? Because we're part of his body. And I, we can't be in a place where we have people saying, well, I, I just don't hear from the Lord. I just don't know how. I can tell you he's talking to you all the time. And it's time that we know that and we exchange that. So April the 3rd, starting Starting April the 3rd, Wednesdays will move to 6.30. So here's what Wednesday nights will look like going forward. The first and second Wednesday of, of the month is going to be teaching. First and second Wednesday. Third Wednesday is small groups. And then fourth Wednesday is night of prayer. We used to have night of prayer on Tuesday. We need to be praying as a group way more. This house is to be a house of prayer. We're to not, prayer is not to be a burden. It's not to be ambiguous or how to put it together. But it's to be something that we're doing together and we're seeing God move and, and he's working in our midst and we're praying and we praying for the church and praying for one another and God's moving. Not just us, but God's moving. So that's the fourth Wednesday. And then any month that's a fifth Wednesday, we're having what we're calling Encounter Wednesdays. It's kind of like old school Sunday night. You're like, what's that? Well, come be a part. Find out. So that's what... We're, we're, we're looking to do. That's a, kind of some house plan. Is it completely rearranging everything? Is it uh, what we're talking about coming in, in uh, April about vision? No, but this is, we're open. We're, we're taking that wall down right there, and we're going to open that up there, and we're going to make life exchange a little bit better, a little bit easier, and we're going to institute small groups through Wednesday night and in homes on the first week of the month Again, in spring and in fall. In the summer, we'll we not, won't have those in homes. I'm not saying you can't get together or whatever, but we're doing it to where it's timeline like that. But even in the summer, we'll have small groups on Wednesday night. So we'll have what we call consistency and where relationships can get built and where someone, when they come in, they can get plugged in and get connected and where we're seeing people get born again left and right. You know what they need? Somebody to walk with them and, and show them how to walk with the Lord and how to hear from the Lord and how to struggle well. How to fall forward. Did anybody here ever fall? Yeah. Well, guess what? You got back up again. And you know what's great? is when you can fall forward. And you got somebody there to help pick you up and, and brush you off. That's the best thing ever. And so I really believe it's going to be uh, part of the key is going to be small groups and what we're doing with Wednesday nights. And if you're here on Sunday morning, you're called to be a part of the body. I'm telling you, there will be life that flows there. Um, and you have to ask this. This is what I'd ask you. What is the Lord prompting you to do? What is he prompting you? Just listen to, to the Lord. Oh, well, I, that's, not, that's not my role. That's not what I do. That's not how, how, I, how I am. Okay. According to who? Well, that's just what. Ask the Lord and, fi and find out. Maybe, just maybe, there's things in you that you haven't tapped and you let go of long ago. And the influence that you're to be in the wisdom that you carry or the, whatever it might be, you're to be there. Maybe there's just some new young person that just might be the person that you're so, uh, new to the Lord, that you're so, to take under your wing and to show them how to walk and, and, and stand with them in the, in the season. Maybe, just maybe, everything in life is not just about me. Maybe it's about his plan. Maybe it's not my call. Maybe it is his plan. And I really believe that's what it is, and that's what God's wanting to do in this house, is re reignite his plan in this place. So, Yep, and like he said, um, so the Wednesday time change is going to start April 3rd at 6.30, and it'll be like that from now on for all of our Wednesdays. And um, like he mentioned, we'll still have children's ministry available, so it's going to be in that same format of um, coming into the sanctuary together and also having children's ministry and youth ministry for your family. And then also um, be watching because we'll have more information on that. But um, the small groups will be starting and opening for you to sign up for a group to join April 7th, okay? Yep. So we'll be getting out info on that. Yep. So that's awesome. Do you have anything else? Or you yeah. 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 We'll just let Corey. Yeah.
I don't have anything. Okay. So why don't y'all just go ahead and stand? Sorry. <laughs> and like he said, you know, this is an awesome, um, we just believe this is going to be fruitful for us this year. And like he said, you know, that word of the Lord that came to us was just open doors and house in order. And um, we're just taking it one step at a time for what he's directing. And so these were kind of the first steps that we felt led to do was to um, kind of run our small groups like this and our Wednesday nights. And so we encourage you, if this is where God's planted you, get involved. Because you don't want to miss the supply that God has for you. And I'll say this, sorry, you want to say, um, also for your children. You know, it's important that they see that you're planted in the house of the Lord more even than just Sundays, but the life of the church. You know, the life of the church and their relationships and the word that they're to get um, on that same level. Amen for them to flourish. It's so cool. Talking, I mentioned earlier, talking to a gentleman, <clears throat> him and his wife are both business people. Uh, both run separate businesses, but very successful business people. And both of them they lead a small group. I mean, I just think that's cool that though they have, uh, you know, 80 employees under, you know, that he's managing and paying role and all this. He's like, yeah, I'm in the house of God and I'm leading a small group. Why? Because I'm an influencer. Because I'm a pillar. Because I'm a pillar. God has set me in the church to carry a message of truth. And that's what I'm here for. That's what I live for. That's what I give for. That's what I give my time, my resources, my thoughts. I, I, I live for. We, this is what we're, listen, are, are we his? Or, uh, we're his. Is there anything more important than what God is doing on the earth? Anything. There's nothing. There's nothing. And so we didn't want to add more things. We really felt like we were supposed to get one, two, just that, just that life flow, not excessive, not, you know, uh, but just Wednesday nights, we taking off of Tuesday night and just getting things in order and meeting together uh, in greater ways where there's actually exchange and meeting and, um, and where you, you're missed. It's important to be missed. I wanted to read this word just as we close. This was back from 2011, um, but I love what Brother Keith has said before that no word of God is out of date. Aren't you thankful that when he spoke, let there be light, when he said before he knew you, he had plans for you, aren't you thankful that those didn't expire just because that was a long time ago? Um, so Brother Marty, um, which is just such a gift to our body, but he said this, and I just feel this word has just been coming up probably daily um, to me and just stirring on it. And I really feel like this is what you talked about with just this Kairos like opportunity moment that we're in as a church and in this season of time because Jesus is coming back. He's coming back. So um, I just want you to close your eyes and just take this in and just let this, um, let God's word to you this morning. I don't want you to hear it. Some of you have probably heard this word a lot. Some of you, this may be the first time. And I want you to hear it from a place of faith and from God speaking it fresh and new to you. And let that paint the picture that the Holy Spirit's wanting to paint on your heart, okay? It says, it's a new day. It's a new time. It's a new season for you. And I see an open door and you're going through. And through that door is blessing and favor and peace and a supply of the Spirit to you and upon you. And your influence shall increase. And the church shall prosper and its influence expand. And the work of God within this house shall be spoken of throughout the land. And many shall be touched by God's goodness, his love, his grace. And the hand of the Lord shall rest mightily upon this people and this place. To those serving in the church, I have assembled you in this season, and I have set each one of you in your designated place, and I have anointed you by my spirit, and I have endowed you with my grace to walk with and beside these pastors, to uphold them in their place. And so side by side, hand in hand, diligently run this race, and the plan of God will be consummated, and his purpose will be fulfilled, and your hearts will be glad. And great fruit will abound as you accomplish his will. Amen. Let's just lift our hands to him this morning. And I want us to say this. Be it done unto me. Be it done unto me. According, according to your word. According to your word. I want you to say it again. Be it done unto me. Be it done unto me. 
according to your word. So, Father, we just thank you. We thank you for this body of believers, this house um, that you've set here in Alma. And we just thank you that you've planted us here. You've called us here. You've anointed us here. We thank you. Your hand is upon us to preach Jesus, everyone, everywhere, every day. We thank you in 2024, this will be a great year, a year like never before. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Increased uh, wisdom, increased steps, increased uh, connections. We thank you for that, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we just say with our hearts, we're all in. We're all in to what you're building. We're all in to what you're doing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. The brightest days of the church are ahead. But that means the brightest days for you. They're ahead. And so get, let that picture fill your heart. Brightness. Amen. 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 Well, with that, um, if you, you know, I, I'm going to just give an invitation to Jesus this morning before we dismiss because um, when I dismiss, this is what I'm going to come into agreement with what the Lord said and said, now you go. And preach Jesus. But an invitation to Jesus sounds like this. If you're here today and you don't know where you'd spend eternity, if your life was required of you, you don't know that Jesus is your Lord, you've never, you're here this morning, you know you've got to give your life to Jesus. He's drawn on your heart saying, I, I know I not need to get right with God. Why don't you lift your hand right where you're at? Right where you're at. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I don't see any hands. See, this is, kind of, oh, there, there you go, buddy. All right. Yep. And that, that's a heart to just cry out to the, to the Lord. You know, the, did you know that God is knocking on the doors of hearts all over, this, all over the place? And that God is doing more than you think he is in your workplace with your coworker? And if we'll open our mouth and just pray, pray a simple prayer to get God involved with your life, to give your life to him through a prayer, man, you see things just change, just change, amen, amen, I'll just, I'll lead you in a prayer uh, of salvation, again, the Bible says this, and you make it your own, I'm talking to the, this body to, to be doers of the word, not just for Pastor Nate to share a message, it'll come out different every time, okay, it doesn't have to come out perfect, there is no perfect, you know what, it, it, you know when the plant gets wet, the plant got watered, you can take the hose on the plant, you can spray it in the air, it can come but it got water. And you just, the Bible says, if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you'll be saved. Because your heart is what you believe with. But with your mouth, confession is made to salvation. So it can sound something as simple as this. Lord, I believe that you sent your son Jesus to pay the price for me. And, and, and that, 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 that's simple. And right now, I place my trust in you. That's simple. That's simple. Amen. Amen. Uh, God bless you. We'll see you guys Wednesday night. I think that's it. I